International Jewish Festival proudly presents Moshe trained in the Japanese art of assassination arts for 25 years. Karate is sport fighting. We do not do sport fighting. What we will always seek to do is kill the opponent immediately and effectively. This may sound extreme to you, but when a man's coming in your house at night, you don't want to do three rounds with him. Many times a person, a lady, or a child would have an eye protecting himself. This strike is going in with the ball of the foot directly to the groin. The second strike you want to see is the side kick. It's done also on four counts. Watch carefully. On the count of one, it's put up. On the count of two, it's put out. Three back and four down, hitting with the heel arch area. This will be thrown to break the knee or into the ribs. Ready, left leg, full count, ready, kick. Left leg, ready, kick. Left leg, ready, kick. Right leg, ready, hit. Ready, hit. That's called a side thrusting kick. The rear thrusting kick is done, also on four counts. On the count of one, the kick is brought up, looking over your shoulder. On the count of two, it's done straight out, hitting with the heel arch area. On the count of three, it's brought back, on the count of four, down. Rear thrusting kick, very deadly weapon. The man throws a low punch, okay, low punch. It's here strike, right in, right into the throat. It doesn't take a lot of force in order to kill in this fashion. Throw a rich hand strike to the front, ready, hit. Ready, hit. Opposite hand, ready, strike, ready, strike, and that concludes the middle range weapon. We now have the ability to hit 360 degrees with the feet and with the hands. That means without moving, we can hit to the front side and rear without having to turn around or change position. Now, the close range weapons are the elbow strikes. The elbow strikes are the most powerful of strikes and perhaps the most practical of strikes. After all said and done, if a person wants to kill you, you're going to be dead. If a person has a contract out on you, there's no defense against that. Because a person, it's not like the movies. If a man has a contract out on your life, he does not say, this is it, Joey, you know, time is up. A person will just, you know, let you walk by. Bang, right That's how contact hit is performed. That's why I'm as vulnerable to that as anyone else. So if you're alive for the first second, you can automatically assume that this person either wants your money or you to get into a car or something. There's some reason that he hasn't killed you with that knife or that gun. So that's really going in your favor. What you don't want to do is challenge the man. If you challenge the man, then you're going to make him more uh, ready, readily to hurt you. What you want to do is relax the opponent at all times. Uh, it's opposite philosophy from what we would consider karate sport fight. If a guy pushes you in the street, put. You don't want to jump into any fancy stances. I have never seen anyone in Brooklyn do this. Jump into a stance. Uh-oh, we better get out of here. He's a nose karate. Let's forget it. Mugging's off. No, it doesn't work like that. What they might do is this. Step in the stance. Oh, what do you know? He knows karate. Let's better use a gun on this guy. If they believe you. You understand? So therefore, what you'd rather do is, if this man pushes you or starts with you, Hey, please, buddy, I really don't want to throw a Whack, whack, hit right in. Just relax him. Calm him down. Let him know that it's going to be an ideal mugging, that everything's going to go according to program. You understand? And maintain a distance at all times. Take your wallet. Throw it on the floor in front. If he wants your money, he can take it and leave. If he kicks the money aside, well, then you'll be glad that you didn't let him get closer. If a person does come close to you, in any fashion to grab or in any fashion to intimidate you, then we're going to use the close range weapon. The first one is the roundhouse elbow strike. Left hand up, ready, hit. The elbow strikes bring all the natural weight and power directly into the area. Again, bring it up and hit. Ready, strike. Opposite hand, full power, ready, hit. Ready, hit. That's called the roundhouse elbow strike. It's thrown to the side of the head or into the ribs. Okay, get ready to throw upward elbow strike with the left hand. Ready, strike. 
Ready, strike. This is thrown to the jaw or into the solar plexus. Opposite hand, ready, hit. Ready, hit. Good. Throw left side elbow strike. Ready, strike. Ready, hit. Right side elbow strike. Ready, hit. If a man's off to the side, barreling in. I don't care if you're a man, woman, or anything in between. If you take an elbow strike right into the ribs, you're going to break that area. If you're 90 years old, you could rip an eye out. The question is, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. How many of these ladies in the audience are prepared to rip a man's eye out with their first two fingers? Let me tell you that before you die, you will have had the opportunity to do that in nine out of 10 chances. And as gory as that may seem, it is a much better thing than you getting stared. And that is the alternative. Look at how foolish we are. A lot of people would be glad to hit a man with a baseball back in the head if he had a bag over his head. But if he didn't have a bag over his head to hit him in the face, oh, that's, that's just too cruel. The idea is, it's a dangerous world out there. We gotta get off the fantasy trip. You're not gonna be getting the, uh, the sparring practice award and nobody's watching you and nobody gives a damn. It's just you and that attacker alone, maybe in your apartment, maybe late at night. You will have the ability, with a little concentration, you have the ability to kill this man. He's not expecting it. If he thought you were a killer, he would have chose you in the first place. A mother chooses his victims very carefully. Now, I'm gonna call the strike and you throw it. You'll see that we have the ability to hit 360 degrees without moving. If a man comes to the front, we throw a front snapping kick, ready, hit. If a man comes to the side, we throw a side kick, ready, kick. If a man's to the rear, we throw a rear kick, kick. That's in the far range weapon. In the middle range, if a man's to the front, we throw a vertical fist strike, hit. Or a back knuckle strike, hit. Or a palm blow, ready, strike. If a man's to the side, we throw a vertical fist strike, hit or a back knuckle strike, hit. If a man's to the rear, we will throw a back knuckle strike, strike. Is there any questions on that? Okay, now. Not that I can answer your questions anyway, just stay here, but. Let's talk about weapons for a minute. A lot of times a person will pull out a weapon to intimidate you. Perhaps the most common weapon is a knife. Now, from this distance that I'm standing, the knife really doesn't exist, does it? because I can't reach him. If a man's taunting you like this with a knife that he hasn't come in yet, that's in order to scare you. In a way, he's insecure. If he was a Japanese knife thrower, you wouldn't see any weapons. It would just be buried hilt deep inside of you. Um, if you see that weapon, probably he has a name for it, Joe or something. It's his favorite knife. He watches TV with it. He's not so quickly going to throw it away. He wants to, if he was so big that he could pick you up by the collar and take your money out of your pocket, he wouldn't need a weapon. He's doing that in order to compensate for his inferiority. It's very important to remember that. He wants you to be afraid. So therefore, if you're going to be afraid, you're right away playing into his game. Now, at this distance, for instance, if he starts coming slowly with that knife, he's never going to be able to stab me because the leg is longer than the hand. So as soon as he gets anywhere in range, and again, you're not going to be stuck coming in, jumping into stances and all of that. You're just going to be nice and relaxed. So please, I don't want to go whack, and you'll be winning nine out of ten of your fights right there. On the other hand, if a person has the knife a little closer, you're going to have to learn knife defense. Now, the first thing you do is close the hands, shut up, like this. As soon as you see a weapon, a knife, the first thing you're going to do is get into this position. That may look very funny, but actually, in the back of your wrist, you can't take a cut. You'll bleed and die. On, the back, on this side, on the back of your arm, there's no veins or ten There's only muscle and bone. You could actually take many slashes there without getting killed. Not that you want to get any of them. But the first thing you're going to do is step into this position. The second thing you're going to do is, as the knife is coming in... Who has the knife? Okay. All right. You know, you know, as the knife is coming in, you're going to move aside and take it right in. If, if you had a ball, it would be very hard to stab a knife into a wooden ball on a, on a pivot, on a spool, because the turning motion will help to take it away. Watch carefully once when I do the technique. By moving in this fashion, you don't have to move a lot. It's not like you have to go and block that knife. He wants to bury it into your gut. And so therefore, as he's coming in, you just decide which side he's closer to and move in that fashion. 
After that, you secure the knife and take care of him in the following way. Let's do that again. Watch one more time, he does it to him. That's it, all right, and as soon as you move, you want to minimize the movements and maximize the damage. I don't know if you've been watching the movies, but you better get this right out of your mind. Hold the knife. Boom! You kick that knife out of his hand. You've got to be crazy. Get it out of your mind. Even if you could, there was one superstar who could do that, it would still be a very stupid thing to do. To learn ninjutsu from a ninja movie is to like become a sadly gone hagodo from watching the Ten Commandments movie with Charlton Heston. Let's talk about a downward knife attack. If a man comes with a downward knife attack, you're going to block deep and take the knife out of the hands in the following way. By controlling the knife with the block, you'll be able to remove that weapon. Nine out of ten times, if you are relaxed, you'll be able to just reach out and grab that knife away. Because, see, you the man again thinks that you're scared. If you play up to that, there's no reason for him to think differently. Let me ask you buddy, I don't want no trouble. Boom, right in. Nine out of ten times, you just control the weapon because you don't need to threaten the man. Now, let's talk, how many people here, if they were in noise at night, would be reaching for a kitchen knife and walking downstairs like this? Everybody probably in the audience, whether you say so or not. The first thing everybody does is good, you know, daddy or granddaddy with the kitchen knife in one hand and the flashlight in the other hand, right? And he's coming down the stairs. Now, if you have that knife in front, it's very bad because you're showing your weapon. The, if you do this technique, you'll probably be able to uh, defend yourself using any knife. What you want to do is keep the knife in back of you and keep the other hand in front. With the hand that's in front, you're going to fake. You're going to throw a punch at this man. Now, if he doesn't want to block, hit him in the face. But if he does go to block, cut his wrist and get out. Let me show you what I mean. This one. You got that? Keep the knife well back. Throw the punch. He goes to block, cut, and get right out. You got that? Now, do you know the defense against a bear hug or anything? Okay, this is the defense against the bear hug from the rear. Rip. From here, strike, strike, right in. The way we're making the escape is we're making a full circumference. We're expanding ourselves more than the real grab is being made, and then when we relax, we go right out. Much as Houdini would expand his wrist when being tied up, and then relax and come right out. Okay, he grabs him, make a full circumference, it's in, strike, and right into the groin. Okay, you grab him by the wrist. You know your wrist locks? He grabs you, relax. He grabs you by the wrist. From here, it's up and into an arm bar. The arm bar technique is going against the back of the arm. Now let me just show you that you don't need a lot of strength to do these techniques. Um, can I have some strong men from the audience? Is anybody out there? We're not going to kill you. We're just going to maim you. What's the matter? Huh? Anybody out there? All right, this guy over here. Come here. Just don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. Come here. Hey, look, we can go there and get you if we want anyway. You come on, come on. I just want to show you what I mean by if there's no force, there's no action, there's no reaction. If he grabs your wrist, or any grab my wrist, tight, tight, grip tight. This man is strong. He possesses physical strength. Maybe I'm stronger, maybe not, but he would feel the fight. Do you see that? Do you feel the fight happen? Yeah, yeah. Now grip tight as you can. I'm not using strength, and therefore he can't apply his strength against it. Again, it's very relaxed. You're not fighting out. Grab both hands. Any which way you want to move this man, you I, don't let me move. I can't move any which way here. But if I don't want to fight, I take something out of my pocket, put it in the machine, move him here, move him there. How come he can't get a, a grip? He himself doesn't know why he can't stop that from happening. Hold this. Yeah. Once you're up, it's rough. Right. See? I'm going to use my, my people here because nobody wants to come up. But let me tell you that they're not giving me anything. If you, it's simple science. Every action takes an equal and opposite reaction. A person does not have an aura of force that he could just put on somebody. So that, go like this with your hands. Uh, like that. He can't stop you like that. 
The strongest man in the world, if he grabs a rabbit by the foot, he's got to figure out what direction that rabbit is moving in. So therefore, it's more in understanding force than in combating force. That's why in our art, there's no push-ups, no sit-ups. What we want to do is minimize the effort that we need in order to move this opponent. Now, if you just relax and move, you may not think so, but you can move. What happens is when you tense, when you try too hard, that's when you run into a difficulty. Now let's go back to the knife and talk about a static knife attack. Stab just in the air, stab this knife as fast as you can. Fast as you can, okay, faster. You see how fast you stab in the knife? Now, hold the knife on me anywhere, static. If he's holding the knife here, stab me when I move. Too late, get ready. That's it, I'm stabbed. I just want to show you that in a real street fight, you could be going, please, I don't want to trouble, and he still won't stab you. But for the purpose of this, if he puts it on you, stab me when I move. See, he's really ready. And any, I challenge anyone who wants to come up here hold the knife on me, I'm not going to hurt them. And please, not your real knives, we'll use the ones here if you don't mind, okay? But if he holds it on your back, it's the same thing, you're very relaxed, okay? It, he won't get uh, upset if you quickly, well, I don't want no trouble. From there, you know what hand he has it in. From here, relax and move right in. He is trying to stab me. The reason why it works is one movement beats two movements. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to have to keep using you if you don't mind, because I don't have anybody else. Now, you'll be paid just the amount we agreed on. Okay. Here. Hold this knife on me. We're going to just do a few combinations. He's going to hold the knife on me in a static way. When I move, he's going to stab. Um, 
You get that? All right, please remember that. If you're in a fighting situation, don't build up to it. If the man comes and asks you for your money, again, just relax. Boom, directly through the eye. You know when you get in the car, you turn, you open the door, you put the keys in the ignition, the radio's on, uh, the mirror is fixed, and you're already pulling out of the spot. How long does that take? Two seconds? Now think about 10 guys chasing you with baseball bats. Then you wouldn't even be able to find the keys, would you? The more important a movement is to make, the less effective you will make it. That's why it's not good to be too overly concerned, let's say a surgeon or something. You know, you would die on the operating table if you heard what they're talking about. He goes, oh, hey, you see the Met game today, you know what I mean? They're relaxed. This is a professional attitude because then they're going to be relaxed and function during the operation. Here also, in a fight, the first thing is to remain calm. Now, you guys know your stick defense? Let's talk about a stick for a moment. This is going to represent a stick. We got a nice padding here, you see, so there's no problem with any contact. Now, from here, he's going to attack with a downward stick attack. Move right in and attack. Right, good, excellent. We we'll always want to go right in for the kill. The kill is done with neck breaks, with eye gouges, with the cartilage in the front of the neck. Obviously, you're not going to overcome a man by hitting him in the stomach. You ever see these kickboxing movies where throw this right out kick to me? He's like, boom, 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 and they're exchanging kicks. Just imagine if he went boom, and you went, whoa, right into the eye. Two fingers directly into the eye. One hand closing on the throat. Just close your hands like this. Look at the skeletal structures on the face. And this is a student who didn't pay his bills. Look at how weak the skeletal structures are. There's actually a hole right here in the cheek. See that? Put my hand right through it. I can put it through yours. Because there's nothing there to protect it. How much difference is there between this, what I'm holding here, or every one of you sitting there looking at me and you, what's the difference? Uh, a, a mile of, of skin? A, a foot of skin? A half a foot of skin? Feel your face. You'll feel there's nothing there. Very small areas. And that's the areas we want to attack. The reason why karate doesn't attack these areas is very obvious. If they did, they would be dead every time. Would you like to see a sport fighting match like this? Ready? Thank you. Next guy. If you have to fight more than one second, well, hey, you're doing something wrong, aren't you? Now, let's just talk quickly about some floor fighting techniques and some body movements. You want to have the ability to move away from an attack in many fashions. way. I'm going around way. Um, that's how we will fall if pushed to the front, rear, or anywhere in between. Just very quickly, I hope you remember these and concentrate on them. Again, come here. I take your mask off. The areas that we want to approach, to, if you ever attack, take your two fingers and in directly into the eye socket. Curve them around and remove that eye. Do not be disgusted by it. Take your fingers in this fashion directly into the throat area. Again, I'm not here to entertain you today. I can give you a nice show jumping around like I just did. I'm here to help you. Take here and squeeze. Just shut. Nobody has ever done throat push-ups. A bottom fist strike to the bridge of the nose at this trajectory. As you see, if you do a roundhouse punch, you can go with it. But if you do a bottom fist strike at this trajectory, then he's, he's going to be finished, no matter who it is. The neck breaks look, look like this. 